Hey everybody, sorry I'm a little bit late, I am feeling well under the weather, rightly so. Christelle and I had a few sangrias and it was a, a wonderful evening and um, I haven't had pizza in God knows how long. It's amazing what uh, happens when we catch up and um, spend good time with good people. So today I wanted to get on and talk about more healthier subjects. Um, we're going to talk today about the different health types. So hey John, thanks for jumping on. Um, so today we're talking about the, the different health types. Every human fits somewhere on a wheel. I couldn't find my coloured one, but I've got this one here. So everyone fits somewhere on this scheme of things, on this wheel, on this health type wheel that I'm always talking about. I'll bring it up on the computer so you guys can see it there. Now this health type wheel is a really great tool for us understanding humans and their complexity. And if you've been on the group and you saw the post, you'll see that it has little animals on it and it has little descriptions of the different types. So I'll go through it generally. The connectors are the thoughtful, playful people. They like to talk a lot. They're energizing, charismatic, and shorter with muscle. So who do you know who's a little bit shorter and quite a playful person? These guys, I'm going to start off straight off the bat and just start describing each of the different types and what that means for them. Um, so <clears throat> these people, yellow is a really important color for them, especially at this current time. I'm going to start with these guys because to me, I feel like they're probably one of the most important types to talk about in this current climate is that these guys are actually, um, these are the playful, lovely people. And these guys gain their energy and their, their love and connection via love and connection. They're called connectors and they literally thrive on connecting. And I know a lot of friends who are connectors or who have had partners who are connectors and um, they themselves or <clears throat> they've had people call them needy or um, clingy or things like this. And this is actually um, sad because the connectors are actually designed, their, their genetics are wired to, um, their genetics are wired to thrive on on oxytocin, on connection, right? So these people are designed to be uh, connected with everyone and that's how they gain their energy, that's how they gain their love, that's how they feel connected and that's how they thrive and feel um, well with people. And so connected are the ones that really, in this current time, they're probably going to need, this is why I wanted everyone to go and do this 10-day um, immune booster and find out what all those people are around you so you know who needs what kind of support in the current climate. And I think that's really, really vital. Oh gosh, it's warm in here. Very warm in here. Um, in the current climate, some people are going to need a little bit more connection and assistance than others. And so just understanding the psychology of the, the friends and family that you have around you will help us to understand, will help you to understand who needs what love and connection and what amount. So um, for connectors, it, it is actually physical touch. So if you're a connector who's in isolation and you, you can't, um, get to anyone and you're not isolated with someone then frequent phone calls um, Zoom using zoom if you have not used zoom yet get on to the the free website application thing It's a it's a webinar application um, And you can video call or just do FaceTiming or things like that with the connector is really important around their meal times It will help them to feel connected good laughs good conversations whilst you are um, Having your dinner is really really important because it just keeps your balance, right? So Connectors need connection during this time and in any way possible that they can. So it is actually really ideal to, um, just trying to find a little document here to give me a few extra bits. Da, da, da. Anyway, um, and so understanding that it's, it's really important that if you have someone who's a connector, go, go talk to them, go make, check in daily and see that they're okay. Give them a text message. Um, if you are in isolation, frequent touching. If you've got children that you suspect might be a connector, they're probably the one that's constantly wanting a hug. They're probably the one that's constantly asking a million questions and they're chitter chattering and they want to be the, they'll, they'll be, they'll be putting on a performance or they'll be, um, constantly wanting your attention more than most children, um, because it's just the way that they, they connect with you, um. Um, connectors in adults and children are also the persons that, well, they can, I guess, um, they can seem a bit over the top. And I actually had a client of a chat with a client of mine the other day who's a connector, and she's come to realise through doing the training with me that she's actually, um, well, she's realised that it works for her to know that she doesn't want to be monogamous because being monogamous means that she has she 
she will automatically overfocus her time and energy and desires and wants and conversation to the one person that she actually has so much that she realizes that in the past her relationships haven't really worked out because she just has so much to give and she can focus so much upon um, that one person that it becomes overbearing. So she's now realized or learned or learned to appreciate is that she actually can and will have um, an abundant amount of energy for the one person. So she actually has to have multiple energies, um, so multiple partners and or um, be doing lots of stuff in the world. So she goes out and does dance and she does um, different craft groups, different exercise groups. And at the moment, I know within isolation, we're, we're not going to get those things anymore. Um, we'll be doing them virtually rather than in the flesh. But just understanding these parts of ourselves, once you understand your different health, the different health types around you and who you are, it's, um, it's, it's, it's quite mindgasmic when you get to open it up and really look into um the genius of you and the genius of them and recognize your natural ways your natural talents your natural uh behaviors and then it brings about this whole new acceptance and this whole new relationship um and we're able to see a lot of relationships being deepened by um understanding these small facts about ourselves and each other so our connectors the yellow color these guys are really all about freedom a connector needs freedom in their, their movement. A connector needs freedom in their, their mind. A connector health type needs um, freedom in their behavior because if they are constricted or if they are berated in front of anybody, it will really actually do a, a mental and physical harm to them. It actually saps their energy and brings them into a depressive state, which we don't want. Our connectors are the fun, loving, their, their symbol animal is actually a dog, right? So I'll show that to you again. Where did I put it? So I'll show you with the I share with you guys the wheel again. So connectors, like I said, they are the yellow color. <clears throat> they are very playful. These guys are the cutest, funnest people. And if they are, apart from today's current standard, if they are secluded or holding themselves back, and there's a, I can see a connector's just jumped onto the video here. Hello, Vanessa. I know you're a connector. So these guys in isolation at the moment are going to need to know that they are they're going to need a little bit more connection via any means possible, which would be video. Um, calls um, face to face if they are in isolation with other people um, and like we said these guys are shorter with muscle you'll actually see a lot of our um, power lifters and um, uh, who are they our power lifters and our I guess um, uh, the groups that go and do the sports together oh my gosh it's not coming to me when you find people that are, that are doing your group sports like um, uh, powerlifting and there's another one that's just not going to come to me these guys are mostly our connectors anyway because it's a group team sport it's something that's done together it's fun it's um it's all about camaraderie and it's really really important for them so these guys are behave their behaviors will be playful just like a puppy dog um these guys are they are well their behavior it can take time for them to warm up to you because you know how sometimes a puppy dog may check and assess you they'll look you up and down and they'll be assessing your energy they'll be sussing you out before they do sometimes these guys can seem kind of cynical um, because they are just checking out your energy they're checking out what kind of a person you are and what kind of energy you are as to whether or not they can trust you sadly if they are not in a good health good health or good mindset they can be very skeptical of people which then what happens due to that they become isolated what happens then they actually lose um, the, any opportunity to gain oxytocin therefore a vicious cycle starts so it really is just important about ensuring that connectors are surrounding themselves with the good people like making sure that the people they have around them are happy and healthy and fun and friendly these guys can unfortunately actually fall into um, the copycat sort of syndrome so they if they are around bad people they will potentially pick up bad habits due to those people um, because it's just the way that they're wired they will copycat on a lot of people a lot of times um, so if you are a connector be careful of who you give your time to and be careful of who you surround yourself with it's very important that you you make sure you have the best humans around you and that you are around people doing good stuff um, because via osmosis you will you will attract and pick up poor habits very easily um, how they play is yeah again very playful very fun very um, uh, these guys like a puppy dog just uh, it's the best way for me to give you an analogy is just like a puppy dog 
Um, they do get a little bit of shiny object syndrome, so they will play around. Um, when it comes to projects, they will actually, they're really good at doing multiple things at once, but they also um, can get distracted very easily. If they're, if they're balanced and they are reminded to come back to the first thing, come back to the first thing, come back to the first thing, they will get jobs done and finished. Um, some are a little more driven to complete tasks because they have a certain, depending on where you sit on the wheel, like with the wheel, each person will sit on there, but there's about 15, uh, 15, 360 degrees there. So they've, they've got about seven or eight spots through there where we will, we will sit. And each person, the more people we put through this profiling program, the more specific we will get it over time, which is really exciting. We've got about 40,000 humans into the system, into the profiling program so far. And I think through the 10 day immune booster, we've probably added a lot more to that, which is really exciting because the more people we go through this profi profiling process, the more accurate everything becomes over time. So they love to play. These guys um, love to be with people, um, give them the opportunity to remember what they are needing to do. So making lists for these guys, but making fun lists is really important. Um, they move, these guys are strong. These guys are probably, and as uh, Vanessa, who's on the line, would know, um, and a few of my other connected clients would know, is that you guys are incredibly strong when you put your mind to it. These guys have got short levers and a lot of muscle, a lot of muscle. So, I'm just going to put you down so I don't wobble too much. So, they've got short levers, massive amounts of muscle on their body, so they've got the capability of lifting heavy, like I can lift really heavy, but I know that most of my connectors, if they put their mind to it and they have a bit of a challenge or a game a bit around the idea of lifting heavy, they could actually outlift me tenfold. And when we're doing deadlifts and squats and things like that, these guys, when we're talking levers, um, these guys are incredible, incredible lifters. Um, how they react. So these guys can be fast to react, but they'll also be very um, uh, fickle. So they'll, they'll jump from one thing to the next. And quite often they'll express themselves immediately in the moment. And then some of them, depending on where they sit on that, on that spectrum, they will actually um, then feel big remorse about it. And they don't generally want to inflict anything on anyone. So these guys, they may react certain things to certain people. So if they have, I always say to my connected, make sure you have someone to, uh, spill the bucket to, to spill your emotions and your thoughts and everything to. You need to have a safe space, safe people to do that with. And this becomes a very healthy relationship because they need somewhere to put that so that the rest of the time they can be the fun, playful, loving, friendly human that they are. Sadly, um, these guys often will not want to burden anyone. So they will actually not say anything bad. Um, it's more activators that can be very reactive. And, and um, so if you have a look here, if they sit more over this side, they'll be a little bit more fiery and aggressive. If they, if they sit over this side, they'll be a little bit more caring and nurturing based. And so understanding where you are on here is the awesomest thing because we get to see what trends and what more, which where you sit will help us to understand uh, what tendencies and traits are going to be more dominant of you that reflect around here. So everyone, if you were to put it in a, in a, in a color chart up across the, the way here, you would have the different color coming up and each color would have a different amount. So you are a different percentage of everything here. You make up, you are a little bit of each of these, but your dominancy would sit somewhere in this spectrum if you're a connector or whichever health type that you are. So with their reactions, connectors sadly will not want to uh, kick up a fuss and they won't want anybody else to feel pain. They won't want anybody else to feel attacked. They won't want anyone else to feel uncomfortable. So often they won't say stuff and they won't speak about things because they don't want to upset anybody. So then it's really important that they have a venting point um, and somewhere safe, someone, somewhere, some people to go and vent and get rid of that energy and not hold on to it so that they can be... Uh, turn that silent so that they can be um, safe and then they can they can spill into the bucket all of their negative thoughts and emotions and reactions and then continue to go out and be healthy happy um, rather than in a space of faking it because that after a while can be quite corrosive to these people they get best mostly motivated so how they're motivated is by um, interaction these guys are the connectors are motivated by um, challenge they're motivated by games and play. So when we're when you're coaching or, or teaching or in a, a setting with one of these guys, these guys love group classes. They love um, group settings. They love parties. 
They love um, boot camps and things like this. And the way to motivate them is to create it into a game. So if you have children or you've got a workmate um, that you suspect is probably a connector, the way to motivate them would be, hey, we're going to put this song on. And this is great for everyone in isolation right now. Hey, kids, let's do a cleaning game. We're going to put a song on. And while the song is playing, we're going to run around the house and do as much cleaning as we can while the song is on. And then the next song, we're just going to dance and be silly and fun. And then the next song, we're going to spend cleaning. And so, or whatever it might be um so you can see how that is the way to actually get them motivated to do the thing so for you guys it might be at home you've got it or at work and you've got stuff to do so maybe you might play a song um and use that song time to write out your emails or that song time to get a specific work module done and then you'll have another song where you get up and play and dance does that make sense so you will they will uh be motivated by play and games um so to make it fun or maybe they might um we, we actually speak about this a lot when we do seminars is that we will generally say to someone in the office if they're a connector and they're feeling really disconnected we'll say right so why don't you set your alarm for 20 minutes and you're going to do 20 minutes of emails and then you're going to get up and you're going to run around the office and high five everybody and maybe go into the kitchen and make a cup of tea for everyone or um get a glass of water for everyone and then they'll come out and they'll hand out the glass of water and then they'll feel really good about it um and now that 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 gives them everything they need can you see how that then makes that person super productive because they're getting their time in there to um do the work and then as a reward they go and connect with everybody i know in the current climate right now maybe not so much but you know we can find creative ways of initiating it and giving these people that ability to um contribute and be challenged and have play and fun around all aspects actually i think in the current climate all of us could do with a bit of this um what is their healthiest expression and so much okay so their healthiest expression like i've said is just them being playful and then having fun and then being interactive in a relationship like i said before these guys um in the younger years will generally actually have many many partners they will give their their love and their connection and their play to multiple people um and it doesn't mean that they can't be in monogamous relationships at all i actually have a couple of friends of mine and they are both connectors and they have the most creative playful um, fully open, self-expressive relationship I've ever seen of two connectors and they're um, around my age. So it's, it's not saying they can't, it's just saying that they, um, they have a lot of love to give. So then I would say to a lot of my younger connector clients and friends and family, I would say, you know, have your friends and if you have a partner, let them know that you need to have a good time with your friends as well. Like um, ensure that you are having play time with friends a lot more so that they are getting that fulfillment of variety. Um, and then also making sure that they have other things to go and keep themselves preoccupied with. So whether that be dance classes, whether that be um, dance and music and anything creative and expressive is a really, really good, healthy way for these guys to be. All right, let's go across the wheel. And I actually just measured up my best friend last night and she is a sensor. So these sensors, and I found out the other day my little sister's actually right here on the line as well. So my little sister and my best friend are sitting either side of this. And uh, it's really awesome to see the different um, behaviours of these guys. So these guys can still be very outgoing, can still be quite um, playful and fun and loving. I actually have a, another client who, um, if you can imagine, like they've put a bird here as a symbol animal. So birds are quite fine and deep, um, fine and um, delicate. We see a lot of ballerinas and dancers are actually sensors. Um, they can be fiery and aggressive if they need to be, um, word-wise, but they will generally actually be, our sensors will generally be quite, uh, they'll walk into a room, they'll analyse everything and be knowing where the exit is. So they need to, if you put a sensor beside me, they're a very fine, detailed body. I'm very Amazonian, so I'm a, I'm a solid person. So um, these sensor people uh, will generally go out and they will they'll already know the surrounding. Um, they're basically their biggest, uh, mm, their biggest muscle in their body is actually their brain. Their biggest um, asset is their brain. But as, as the name says, they're sensors. So they sense everything. And a lot of them will actually go into overdrive if they're in too much public space and they're being overstimulated. Um, they will usually have a, a quiet home, a very simple quaint area. Everything is uh, logical. Everything is organized. Everything is in its place because for these guys, um, their energy 
is is very um, important and they need, they need to protect their energy as much as possible because they don't have a lot of it. Their body doesn't store energy. And in saying that, these guys will uh, are like birds and they will graze. So they'll constantly be eating little bits of food to keep their energy up. And so it's super important for these guys to uh, on, on a few physical attributes. So they need to keep their energy up constantly and be eating frequently. But they also have the most, as we say, sensing their senses. They're always sensing. So as a result... The main sensing can come from the gut, right? So their stomach is actually quite weak. So they have a very strong brain, they have a very weak stomach. So these guys need to ensure that they are constantly eating cooked food. They can eat seeds and nuts and whatnot, but generally the sensor type of people, they're the ones that need to eat really well cooked food constantly. They are also the ones that get to celebrate carbohydrates. They love their carbohydrates and carbohydrates love them. I know all of us love carbohydrates, but as some of the larger bodies would agree, some carbohydrates might love us a little too much and decide to stick around. Whereas for these guys, their body is always on, their brain is always going, and our brain is actually one of the most powerful muscles that we have. Um, so therefore, it needs a lot of energy to be feeding it. And that generally gets to come for them in the shape of um, carbohydrates and frequently, frequent little meals, lots of carbohydrates. They can process a lot of protein if they want to, but these guys are the ones that do well with like a stew or a goulash or um, a slow cooker. A slow cooker is an absolute must in the sensor's kitchen because their, their body needs that well-cooked food constantly. Um, what else, what else, what else? They also may seem um, aloof at times and they will seem less talkative. They are very productive, extremely sensitive. Um, they are long and lean people. Hey, Talia, they are long and lean humans. So these guys, you might see these people and look like, they even look like a bird, right? So they even look um, skinnier, um, they're like my father. My father, I found out he's actually a sense of crusader. So he's actually like super lean. My whole life has been able to eat anything he wanted and will seldom put on weight. But these senses can put on weight, but it looks kind of funny because they just get this little belly on them, right? A little belly and it just becomes this tire around the midriff. So their brain is the most on, belly is the most sensitive. Their body is very fine and detailed and can be conceived to be frail, um, I actually, I want to tell you guys a story. I actually, um, a couple of years ago, we, we had a farewell for a friend at the beach and, um, we were all in the water and whatnot and her, her and her daughter were there as well. And they don't normally go into the water very deep because they're both very skinny, very, very frail bodies. And because I was there, we actually went out quite deep and her daughter was actually able to go quite deep into the waves, which she absolutely loved. I'm pretty sure she's an activator, but, um, so she, um, the daughter wanted to be in the waves, but the mother had never let her daughter go into the waves because she herself was so frail. She couldn't even fight the waves, right? So the, the waves even knocked her over. So what actually happened is that I actually stood, the waves were there. The girls were here in front of me and I stood behind her and her daughter. And so the waves would hit them both and they both were so excited. They loved it. The waves would hit both of them. And then I'd catch them and scoop them up and, and save them every wave. But um, both of them got to experience something that they hadn't experienced in such a long time because they were they were they their bodies were so frail. So that's why understanding each other and understanding the dynamics of our, um, of our humanness and understanding me as a, as a younger woman, I hated my size. I hated being so big. I hated being so strong because men were so intimidated by me. But now with, with things like that, with that kind of a story, now I really can sit there and reflect with so much gratitude for the human that I am because I get to actually sit there and, and give my strength to people that don't have it, right? I get to give my strength and protect and provide something to someone else who couldn't have that thing because they're the opposite to me, right? more of these conversations to come. So back to the senses, understanding these guys might seem aloof, but they're always watching. They're always analyzing. They're very logical. Everything needs to come in an order. A senses best friend is a list. These guys love lists. They love checklists. They love to have all the facts. I love having cli um, clients that are crusaders and senses because these are the clients that I just give them all of the information and all of the data. They go and they read it and then they do it. If it makes sense, they will just do it. Whereas the endomorph side over here, I wanna, I'm going to give you guys a visual while we're talking about it. So these guys over here, awesome clients. They just do it. If it makes sense, they just do the thing. Once they are convinced, once they are um, ready to do it and they, they understand why it's important, they will just go do it. Over here, these guys are a little bit more um, sensitive, right? These guys are the ones that are going to get going to feel deprived. Like if you, if you, they're set in their ways, I should say, actually, 
these guys are stubborn and set in their ways, as well as being very nurturing and very loving. They're very stubborn and set in their ways. So sometimes they actually get in their own way, if that makes sense. These guys can get stuck in habits and not want to change too easily. And also their habits are always based around an emotional standpoint as to why they've chosen to have that habit, right? So, you know, it might be dessert. Having dessert every night is, the, is, is important to me because my family comes together and we have dessert, but I've had dessert for my whole life. So why would I want to stop having dessert? Because it feels good to have it because it's connection and family time and it's sweet and it's yummy and it's, it's loving. But maybe they're in poor health and they're diabetic now and they're needing to stop having dessert so often. So getting this person to change that habit will have to come from a much more emotional standpoint, whereas these guys will have a more um, logical standpoint as to what it is. These guys just has to be fun, creative and a game and a challenge. These guys love a challenge. You challenge an activator to do something. Um, you'll hear me sometimes when I'm doing videos and lives and I'll be with any activators, I'll be like, all right, I bet you, can, you can't do 10 more. Oh, yes, I can. Of course I can. And they'll go do it, right? So it's, it's a fun game with these guys getting them to do anything. You can just create a game and a challenge and, and they just want every, they want to have the most energy and be the best at everything they do. Therefore, when I'm ch uh, coaching these guys, I have to make sure that everything is a fun, playful, colorful challenge. These guys, it needs to be very emotional and I need to, they need to feel the reason why. They need to understand the reason why they're doing it and what it's going to do for them, but also what it's going to do for their loved ones. These guys, it just needs to be logical and they'll do it. We love that. <laughs> so our senses in... I hope that gives you a bit of more of an understanding about senses. Talia, I know, Talia, sorry, you are um, a sensor as well. We found out the other, um, we've confirmed the other day, which is awesome. So sensors really do need to make sure that they have, um, they just, you just need to have logic. And if you are overstimulated, it's actually very important for these guys to go and have um, some downtime, some quiet time away from everyone. Meditation is really good. Keeping the spine moving, um, flexibility, yoga and things like these are really, really important for our senses. Moving the body, moving the spine is essential. Um, so their behavior, I think I've gone through that pretty well. How they play, now, these guys can be quite playful and they can have such a quirky, these guys are very artistic. These guys are the most artistic humans there, there is really. They are very expressive. Um, I know that Angel, one of my clients, she's um, one of my past clients. She's incredibly artistic, incredibly spiritual. Um, some senses will be a bit standoffish because, like I said to you, they're a little bit more um, because they don't have much in reserve. Sometimes they can they can push people away and, and keep distance between themselves and other people. And this will then be um, this is what they do naturally because they just they know a sensor knows that they don't have much reserve, so they want to keep a distance. That being said, Angel, if she actually watches this replay, will agree with you. Some senses love hugs and they actually give the best hug. So they've got, there's a sliding scale of senses. Some senses will be like, nah, keep away from me and give me my distance. Other senses are very emotional and they love good connection, but they will be very protective of their energy and they'll make sure that the people that they are hugging and connecting with, the senses will make sure that they are good energy people. You know you're a good energy person if you've got a sensor who's hugging you because they feel safe with you. They feel connected with you. They feel safe. Um, and they're there. therefore, they will then be willing to um, spend a lot more time with you because you help keep them feel sa help them feel safe. Uh, what else? Then we go into how they react. Sensors are not necessarily very reactive people, actually. Sensors will generally actually, um, like I said, they're very logical. So they will take in all the facts and they generally won't react. They'll probably actually just take it all in, assemble it in their brain, make it logical, make a pattern, and then they will come out. If they are reacting, it will be it will be from an emotional overload where they do feel threatened and stressed. You may then get a reactive sensor. Um, hey, Makita, great to see you on here, girl. How are you? I have, I'll have a chat with you later about mining, actually. Um, then how are they motivated? So sensors, like I said, these guys are very logical. So they are motivated by clarity. They are motivated by logic. They are motivated by... Um, uh, someone sending me messages, Talia, stop it. <laughs> um, they're motivated by, um, if this doing this thing makes sense for me, if doing this thing is logic for me to do it, then I will do it and I will be motivated to get it done because it doesn't make sense to leave something undone for them, right? Everything, can you hear the language I'm using right now? Everything makes sense. Everything is sensed. So for these guys to be, um, uh, 
unmotivated is very uncommon, but it would then mean that there's something chemically going on that they're not getting and they're probably in overwhelm. They probably have too many things happening and they probably uh, have not been able to make logical sense of any of it. So therefore the sensor who's in overwhelm, who's in like chaos needs to go away, desensitize from their environment. They also need to go away and create logic and order and clarity and then they will feel better and then they will, will respond better. You also know a sensor is not feeling well and is overwhelmed when their guts is playing up. So if they're getting bloating, distension, uh, poor digestion, it's because there's some oversensing going on um, and or they're eating raw food. So these guys are the ones. So, you know, everyone's always like, be healthy, eat a salad, blah, 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 blah. To sensors, no, that's actually unhealthy. It's actually the one thing I say to my sensors, don't eat salads. Don't do it. How to, Like literally, like don't eat a salad. These guys are not going to do well with eating a salad. They actually need to have everything warm. Everything needs to be well cooked. Everything needs to be easy to digest. The only time I would say have raw is if they're doing a, um, a smoothies. Smoothies are fine because they're really well broken down, right? Because a smoothie blends everything. So their body's going to digest it very well, very quickly. So yes to smoothies, yes to juices, but no to salads, right? Protect your gut. Don't have a salad if you're a sensor. Um, what else? Uh, we've talked about suppressed and stressed. So they, like I said, logic, order, keep it simple, clear everything out, desensitize and start again, really. Um, the best way to give these guys tasks is just give them a checklist, give them order, give them clarity. Let's move across to activators now. So activators are, so we've already done guys, if you're tuning in now, we've done connectors, we've done sensors just now. We're going to move over and we're going to talk about the activators. So as you can see, activators, their symbol animal is a cat. So cats are very agile. They can be very aggressive. Cats can also be, so these guys are normally the party, like these are party animals. These are the fun ones, short, fiery, aggressive. Um, these guys run on testosterone and adrenaline. Um, these guys are actually, statistically, these guys are the ones that are most likely from here, uh, sorry, from on this part of the wheel, they're actually... These guys are the populators of the world. These guys are the ones that have more children. <laughs> Why? Because they are very well driven. They are very well motivated. And uh, they, they love to be playful and aggressive. And, and, um, and they're very charismatic, these people. Um, and a fun fact, actually, that I forgot to say about connectors. These guys actually, if you look at photos of connectors, if you look at a connector's face, they are actually attractive. Like these guys have got very attractive, pleasing faces. It's very, very interesting. Um, we actually now know with the trends that we've seen is that connectors, their thing is to connect. Their thing is to be with people. So in saying that, um, these people <laughs> are created to look pleasing as well, to be attractive. Fun fact. So back to the activators. Activators are agile. They're focused. They're competitive. They love change. They love variety. They love challenges. They are generally much shorter people. You see a lot of, um, and, they, and this is a full, cool fun fact, these guys have got booty. These guys have got booty. If we could have a cat that had a big booty, we'd, um, we'd be fine. <laughs> it would make sense. But um, these guys have just got great bodies, great physiques. These guys are super attractive, little aggressive people, lots of muscle, um, very well defined muscle. These guys here will be a little bit thicker in muscle. These guys are well defined in muscle. These guys, when we get down here later, these are more like a racehorse. So these more, uh, more uh, thinner and they it's still defined muscle, especially here. You'll see some really, really defined, beautiful bodies in this section. Um, but like I said, they love variety. They love change. They love to be challenged. Um, they are, what are we going to do? How they behave? Okay. So the behavior of these guys is generally as much as they are aggressive and playful and whatnot, they're actually just like a cat. They actually still like their own time, their own space. Everything's in their own way, their own um, objective. Um, they won't do anything unless they want to do it. Um, and you will not change them any other way. And they will actually more often than not say no. Their first word is normally no. They want to disagree with you. They want to challenge you. How many of you have friends and family that would come under that banner? Right? They say no because they want to challenge you and see whether A, you're telling the truth. These guys are actually quite um, introverted very much introverted um, because they, they, as much as they're playful and fiery and aggressive, they also have a lot of, um, they're, they're, they're living in the now. They're, they're very much in this moment. 
Everything else around that doesn't matter. These guys learn by pain. So they will go and do the task or they'll, you know, tough mudder is perfect for these guys. So they, they won't know what's on the other side of that wall, but they'll go jump it and figure it out as they're falling. Maybe they'll break a leg, but that's okay because that's a great story for the kids later, you know, that kind of a thing. These guys love that environment of variety and change and challenge. Um, when it comes to, and so that's how they behave. They're quite fiery and aggressive. And like I said, they'll say no. They'll say no at first. They're going to test you. They're going to test whether or not you actually fully believe what you're saying, whether you actually do what you're saying. And they will also challenge you as to whether or not you fully mean what you're actually asking them to do. They play, play is just continuous for these guys. They love to, to be, to be challenged. Um, depending where they sit, they may still have that, that, that um, introvert can come out a little bit stronger with these guys, depending on where they sit on that spectrum as to what, what part they are. Um, and they, they move their biggest, um, attribute apart from being playful and whatnot is that they move. They are designed to move. If these guys are stressed, um, or suppressed, um, boxed in like these, uh, the connectors and the activators are the ones that I'm most worried about in this current climate, because if they're not moving enough, if they're not being challenged enough, and if they don't get enough variety at the moment, they are going to end up stressed naturally. Their, their, their hormones will go off kilter because they are being withheld or they're not being, um, they're not being given what they naturally require, which is, um, variety and change and challenge. Um, so in this climate, even though we're all in isolation, it's super important that the, the connectors and the activators need to make sure that they're doing online fitness training, which is why in my private group, I've got to do a training session later today. I actually went and got a heap of weights. So in my private group, I'll be doing a, a weights training session. I've also been filling um, the group with some of the stuff from the PH360 group. They're doing um, fitness programs daily as well, which is awesome. So this is for the activators and the connectors. They need variety. They need movement. They need to keep going. So um, giving them lots of variety and change is going to be essential. That's why I like the, the card games, the dice games. When you're doing fitness, gives it variety, gives it challenge, gives it in the moment um, perspective. These guys aren't really the ones, these aren't the ones that you would create a spreadsheet workout for and, and that's regimented and, and documented. These guys would absolutely hate that. They'd probably rip up the paper and throw it at you just for shits and giggles. Um, so these guys will be stressed easily if they're not moving enough and quite often if I have a I have quite a few activator friends and when we're talking if they're bogged down with work and whatnot my first comment to them will always be have you moved when was the last time you moved go move go do something go uh, they need to cathart they need to release their energy these guys are also the ones that in a, an, an aggressive situation or a stressful situation or an argument will fire up and say what's on their mind right now um, and they don't always mean it which is, um, and I know people might just think that's a bit of a cop out, but actually they don't always mean exactly what they're saying. They're just saying exactly what's on their mind right now. So I hope that kind of resonates for you guys with a couple of friends and whatnot. Maybe you have someone that you know potentially um, behaves this way. Getting an understanding of why they react the way they do is super important. And I hope that you guys can see from this conversation why it's so important to understand this of other people because then we get to come into a space of understanding rather than reacting and blaming and judging people. That being said, I'm going to have another glass mouth of water. So that being said, um, play, move, challenge, um, give them stuff to do. If you have children, give them different games. If you have adults, give them different situations. Um, connectors and activators during this time, I would actually recommend having a good collection of um, linen, a good collection of pictures and paintings. Like, if you're going to be stuck inside in isolation at any point, activators and connectors are going to need to make sure they're changing their colors, changing their room, moving things around, creating variety in their day just to get through the current climate. Um, maybe putting up flowers or changing your flowers, like whatever it is. There needs to be something that, that keeps variety, change and challenge for them. Um, how they move. These guys are strong. These guys are powerful. These guys like are very agile. So this is like sprinters, you know, your hundred meter sprinters. That's what these guys are. They're the hundred meter sprinter. They just get in, they do it and then they're finished and then they rest. But the biggest thing that's important for these guys is as much as they do, 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 they actually need to remember. And this is where they fall down is that a lot of them don't remember to rest. They want to go, go, go all the time and they forget to stop. Um, so it's super important for our activators. Um, this is why I like to know what everyone is as a health type, because then we get to know, okay, you, maybe you've been doing too much and now you need to stop and rest. And we, we, we tend to see it show up physically for these guys in uh, the manifestation of inflammation. So 
if these guys are getting inflamed joints and whatnot is actually probably a symbol that they're doing too much and their adrenals are actually going to fatigue and they just need to rest for a bit. So that's when we say, okay, go rest now, go chill, go stop doing so much. Um, we have... Yes, Ta, my little sister's just asking. We have diplomats, guardians, and um, we've done... So, no, we haven't done those ones yet, Talia. We've done connectors, sensors, and activators, and I'm just about to go over to diplomats. Um, so stay tuned. So uh, how they react, that's pretty much uh, everything for an activator. They just react. They react, they react, they react. Um, when you've got relationships and stuff, which I'll get into a little bit more after in throughout this whole conversation, so stay tuned. In a relationship, an activator will react and say what's on their mind, but then if you go over here to the diplomats, these guys are going to then think about it. These guys think and feel for weeks. These guys ruminate. These guys ruminate like no tomorrow. So this one's gone and said what they're thinking right now in the moment. A week later, the diplomat's going to come back and be like, hey, you know that thing you said? I was thinking about it and it really upset me. And this guy's going to be like, what the hell? Why'd you bring that back up again? Like, why does it even matter? I don't even remember what I actually said or I, I didn't actually mean what I said. Or, you know, this person's going to be like, what the heck? It doesn't even matter at all. Whereas a diplomat's going to be like, well, I've been thinking about it all week and I feel like it really hurt me and I feel like you were really insensitive. And so these guys are all about the thinking and the feeling where these guys are just the reacting and the doing. These guys are the thinking and the logic and the, and the sequential order. <laughs> um, so that being said, is there anything I've missed? Best motivated by... Reactivity. Um, once I've done all of the health types, I'll actually finish off and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about how these guys are in relationships and connection. And, and so I'll go through each one and then we'll come back to um, their relationship sections. So diplomats. I am a diplomat. As you can see, our symbol animal is the bison. We are even paced. We are methodical. We are particular. We are very friendly and easygoing. We, are, we have a high body mass. You know it. You definitely know it. We have a big body mass. Um, but we are very friendly. So it depends where we sit on the spectrum. Um, my little sister I found out the other day sits right on the cusp of a diplomat and a gut and a sensor. So she's a diplomat. She's got a solid body, but then she also has a massive amount of sensor traits. So she has, um, she has skinnier legs. Um, the upper part of her legs are a little bit, a little bit thicker. Um, and some sensors will just have this, this, this roundness in the midsection, but their, their wrists and whatnot and their ankles will be very, very fine and deep, uh, finely, uh, they're fine boned. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. So very fine boned. Um, but the diplomats, we are methodical. We are the, the, the Amazonians normally. Like if you were to look back over the time, the diplomats are the ones that were, um, the soldiers. We were the ones that went out there and fought the war. We were the ones that went out there and um, we were on the, f uh, the uh, if you look at it in the Roman times, you know, the activators and connectors were at the front. They were the fiery first line running out, you know, taking charge, um, go in there and kill everything. And then the diplomats were behind them and they came through and just finished the job off and just kept going and kept going and kept going and kept going. And then the diplomats, when the war was finished, they'd bring all the wounded back to the guardians who were the nurturers, the guardians, the censors and the crusaders, who were the nurturers and the doctors. Um, and so they, they, the diplomats would drag everyone back, everyone back and, and bring them back. And then they would, they would help nurture everybody, but then they'd help rebuild the city and then they'd help do this. So they'd just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And eventually, pass out dead in the street, no, eventually they, they'd be stopped. Like th eventually their body just goes, no, nah, I've had enough. I need to shut down now. But as you, so they've got the strength and the stamina to just keep going. Um, but they do need to have everything being an even pace. And this has been a lesson for me over the last couple of years. And um, I've behaved a lot like an activator for most of my life, which has had me very much out of balance and very high strung. Um, but I've neglected the diplomat in me. I've neglected my natural tendency, my natural flow. And I've spent most of my life in reactivity rather than being in an even paced lifestyle. So when I was in Bali, one of my mentors challenged me um, to be a diplomat. Because every time we go through things, I was like, I'm not like a diplomat. I don't do that. I'm not like a diplomat. I'm not like that. I'm more like an activator. And he went, every time you think and see that and, and say that, I'm going to challenge you to be a diplomat in that because obviously you're out of balance. So it was a big slap in the face to me to go, wow, I've been denying 
my natural flow, my natural tendencies, my whole life. So the challenge for me right now is actually um, coming back into calm and back into flow and back into ease um, and trying to find an even pace in my life. So then diplomats get to recognize how they get stressed and, and um, how they get stressed is too much, too much. If things are, um, are too unpredictable. So um, the diplomats are like the Titanic. So the Titanic, before the Titanic left the shore, it knew the path, it knew all of its passengers, it had all of its stocks there. So think about references to what we're going through right now, like bring it into the awareness of what's going on in the world right now. The diplomat was the Titanic and before it left the shore, it knew who it was on, who was on there, exactly where it was going, exactly what it needed. Everything was prepared, prepared and planned and, and it was safe. And then it took a while to get going and starting. And so this is us in the morning. Diplomats are slow in the morning. That was the other thing I didn't mention. Connectors and activators are our early morning people. So are our crusaders. They're all early birds. These guys get up early. Senses can be too. Get up early. Do everything early. You guys go going cocoa while the rest of us stay in bed. So the guardians, the diplomats, and some sensors are the nighttime people. And some connectors, actually. If you take a line straight down the middle, this side sleeper innerers this side early birds annoying loud rowdy people in the morning <laughs> sleeping slow go like the titanic on this side so the diplomats we are the titanic like i said and we need to have everything ready to go what happened to the titanic an iceberg got in the way so an unplanned unexpected situation popped up in front of them and the titanic didn't have so once we get going, it takes forever for a diplomat to get going. But once it gets going, it's on a steady state pace, right? They're just about unstoppable once they get going. So the Titanic had an unexpected um, iceberg in front of it and it didn't have enough time to plan and change trajectory to go around the iceberg. What happened? Poof, crashed. Ground. So diplomats, humans are exactly the same. They need to plan and they need to know everything. You will never get a diplomat give you 100% on anything. They will always keep 10 to 20% in reserve for themselves because they just about, um, they, they, need, they need it. It's, it's, it's a protective mechanism. Even in fitness world, I always was perplexed as to why I could never give my 100%. I was always like, but I'm giving it everything. And then I was like, oh, I'm not really, but I don't want to. I'm, I'm fearing giving my everything because I fear I'm going to run out. And that's a natural tendency for a diplomat. Diplomats need to know that they are financially secure. It's a massive genetic requirement. They need to be financially secure. They need to know that they have enough in reserve. They need to know they have enough stock. They need to know where they're going and what's expected of them. So that then they know how much energy needs to be put in and put out. Make sense? So the diplomats, as much as we're easygoing and we can take a lot of stress. So that being said, like me, like I've been in roles for the last couple of years and of late that are very unpredictable, very um, reactive. And as much as I can take it, I can take it. I have the reserve. I have the build the body to take it. I also know that it actually stresses the crap out of me. Um when people drop stuff on me. So you'll often get, and I'm just referencing it back to me because it's the best way I can give you the analogy. So if you drop stuff in front of me, like if you, um, <laughs> my work bosses know this, if you just drop something in front of me, like randomly without giving me warning, without giving me enough time to process it, and you want a reaction or an answer out of me immediately, it will generally be a, not a nice one. Because I will just go, whoa, you've just dropped this on me and I have no time to process. I don't know what you need from me. And I'm really pissed off because you've now taken my time and my energy and you've made it very unpredictable. It's a very natural reaction for a diplomat to be annoyed at someone taking up their time and their space. Those are the big trigger words for diplomats. Time and space. It's our... Our whole hierarchy is time and space. We are shocking at, at predicting how much time things are going to take. Deadlines are like the death of us. Deadlines are like this big stress point. Um, it's very cute to see this in children, actually. Our diplomat children are the ones that will, I mean, everyone does it. Censors and crusaders often will get their homework done because it makes sense to get it done on time. Why would you stress yourself out and not do it? Whereas a diplomat will often leave it to the last minute because they don't want to do it, but they'll leave it to the last minute. And um, diplomats are motivated by urgency because they will leave it to the last minute because they will procrastinate on it. And then when they finally get into doing it, 
it's like the last minute rush and they are panicked and that's how they get motivated, right? Am I right? How many people out there do this? We procrastinate and then we are motivated by the last minute and the absolute urgency because the deadline is right there and it's just like panic all stations. So understanding this about ourselves, about our children, about our partners, we can actually understand how to assist these people in um, calming. Um, so I had a chat with Talia and her partner the other day um, who they found out they're both diplomats. Well, they're sort of diplomats. Talia's on the cusp of... Oh, she, my little sister sits right here and her partner sits right here. So we got to have a discussion. It was like, okay, Talia, you're very logical and ordered and you are really, really great at creating logic and order and, and sequential, like it makes sense to make sense of things. This one here, he needs logic and order. So when he's in overwhelm, there's too much going on and there's not financial security and all these sorts of things. He needs to have her genius of logic and order to help him create logic and order and then they're both happy and healthy. He creates, he, he provides, he loves to provide, he loves to nurture because he's got so much guardian in him. These guys are the natural nurturers and lovers. Um, so his natural tendencies is to provide, is to nurture, is to um, be there and he needs financial security and logical security and logical order. She creates it. Does that make sense? Do you see how these relationships and knowing ourselves and understanding where we sit here immediately gives us the opportunity to understand each other so much better? Thank you, Tali. Okay, um, moving on because I can totally talk about this forever. Um, how they move. We are strong. We can lift muscles. Um, we, we love to move, but we are plagued with a memory that is attached to feeling. So if we have a memory of something hurting, we won't do that thing again because we will admit, or it takes a lot to get us past that memory, that painful memory. So to motivate a diplomat to do something like fitness, um, these guys are the ones that are capable of lifting like no tomorrow. But if they have a memory of that thing being painful, they're far less likely to go and do it. So the motivator needs to come from a space of um, they need to know why it's going to be beneficial. Um, they need to understand the entire plan. These guys are the ones that you would, they would want to come into a gym and have the whiteboard with the workout on the whiteboard so they know what's coming. Very, very important. Um, in a house with children, um, if your children are diplomats, having lists, chore lists, so they know what needs to be done. So they understand what's happening. When we leave the house, they need to know what the plan is. Or when they get up in the morning, they need to know what needs to be done. And they need to know the time frame in which it needs to be done. And they need to know when it needs to be in by or when it needs to be submitted or when, when things are happening. So again, time and space is super important for these guys. Um, React, they generally, like I said, they are easygoing. Diplomats are very easygoing, but they will react um, in an irrational, emotional standpoint, if they're not balanced. So if time and space has been taken away from them, you will get a very reactive deep diplomat. Um, but if you can give them calm logic and planning, they will be very, very good at taking it. But that being said, with the reactivity, we also take a lot. Like these are the ones that, like I said, back in the old days, they would, they would go and um, they would fight the war, then they'd come back and rebuild the city, then they'd nurture all the, the wounded and whatnot and help everybody, and then they would pass out later. Like, they would they would then, like, months later, have to go into serious recovery because they've burnt out. So, um, these guys are also diplomats, also the farmers. Like, these are the ones that just go out, they do, they do the methodical, even-paced things. Um, yes, Talia's just commenting there, saying she's definitely... Um, She's definitely a cuspy. Yeah, you guys can recognize so much of these traits. It's really, really cool when you start to have these conversations and understanding yourselves and your partners. So in saying that right now, I will say the 10-day detox, um, the, the free 10 days is still available. If you're watching this going, but wow, I wonder what my partner is. Go get, I'll pop the link in here or you'll see my every post the last couple of days has had the link in it. Go and do the 10-day thing so you can find out what your partner is and start to have these great conversations. Talia and Adam... Um, when we did it, just absolutely, it's, it's changed so much of their parameters of themselves, but also their relationship together. Um, so diplomats are motivated by logic. Diplomats are motivated by um, even-paced, calm things. Um, we can be very uh, playful and reactive like I am. Like I'm, a, I'm right in the middle of it. I'm not a cuspy. I'm smack bang in the middle of being a diplomat. But I also have massive um, activator tendencies. So when you start to get your profile done, you get to realize how much you have tendencies of other health types and how strong they are and dominant in you. So when I work, I work like a crusader. When I'm 
uh, there's a part of me that's massively like an activated connector where I'm just like playful and, and well, you guys know this about me anyway. Um, but when you get your profile done, we get to learn all of these things about you. Then uh, how we are suppressed. Um, our suppressive state is, for a diplomat is um, if there's too much. If there's too much going on around them and it's too chaotic, that will suppress and stress out a diplomat. Um, diplomats, the other phrase for diplomats is they, are, they have to be or they like to be heard and part of the herd. Does that make sense? So diplomats like to be heard and be part of the herd. So we are herd mindset. That's why our animal is a bison. We like to be a part of a community. Um, one of our good friends, um, Chatty, he's a diplomat. He's one of my mentors as well. And we were laughing while we were in Bali because he actually said, um, hey, cat, the guardian jumping on. Hello, join in, join in. Um, this diplomat, he actually lives up the mountain in Mulaney. And he laughed because he said, actually, if I look at where I live, he's a diplomat. And he said, I live up the hill. And we have a community that lives up on the hill and he goes, they're actually all diplomats. So we are, have our little, um, our little hill people uh, diplomat um, uh, uh, community up there. So again, diplomats' words are to be heard and a part of the herd. Um, these guys, we love the trees. The connectors and the activators love the beach, love the sand, love the sun. Like, go, go, go. These guys are playful and fun. Hey, cat. Um, these guys love to interact but they, they, they need the sand and the fun and the sun. The guardians and the diplomats are more the tree people. We are the ones that love the forest. We love nature. Everything needs to be nature. If you've got a stressed diplomat, it's actually quite often that their home environment is, um, if a diplomat's home environment is in chaos and not ordered, if you've got stuff everywhere, diplomats, I your biggest urgency right now with the current climate would be to organize everything, clean everything out, go on the spring clean, clean everything out, create order, create logic, create um, structure that will create safety. Um, but also make sure you bring nature inside. So I've actually um, went and got, I kind of died in the car, but some of them are still fine. I went and got some greenery then I'm actually going to pop up into a vase here. So I always try to make sure I have flowers and I have greenery. It's a really good, important idea to have um, if you live in the city or if you – diplomats can live in the city for sure. They obviously do. But um, it's really important for them to have a natural element to their home environment and to have it calm. Um, it's very sensual. Diplomats aren't necessarily tidy. Uh, they are clean, but they won't be tidy. They will have organized mess. <laughs> Who can relate to that? You will have organized mess. And you do feel amazing. Diplomats are very much impacted by their environment. Very much about their environment. If their environment is chaotic, their internal is chaotic. That's a direct reflection of how they're going. If you walk into a diplomat's room and they've got crap everywhere, they're stressed. If they have it ordered and logical and clean and tidy, they will actually naturally feel a lot more happy and balanced and calm. Um, what else, what else, what else? I think that's it for now. That's it for diplomats. We'll pro you, as you're here, um, I'll, we'll, I'll remember bits and snippets of the different health types. We could talk for, for eons about this stuff. Let's go. So we've done, I'll just recap for you guys. We've just done, we started with connector. So the start of the video was connector. We then went to sensor. We've done activator. We're now on diplomat. Let's go across to crusader. So crusaders, these guys are what we call the horse, the race horse. What is it about a racehorse? They have blinkers on and they just go. They go, they go until they hit the finish line. So these guys are determined, skeptical, logical, impersonal, and lean. So these bodies, hey Adam, these bodies are the lean bodies. These guys have, um, oh, I'm trying to turn you around, sorry guys. Um, these guys are, um, if any of you have ever seen photos of my father beside me, um, he's very tall, but he's very lean, very, very lean. Um, if you, uh, my girlfriend, I measured her up and I live with her and her partner are both, um, crusaders as well. Very lean. My whole life she ate McDonald's and I just smelt McDonald's and put on weight. She ate McDonald's and it never affected her weight. <laughs> so these guys are the ones that actually do very well with carbohydrates. Again, they're another thinker brain. So the sensor was the same connectors and oh, sorry, crusaders and sensors are very much the same. Um, but the, the crusader is more mission driven. These guys are very athletic. Um, these guys are normally the ones that you will see uh, in Lycra. Um, so these guys are the ones that like riding um, anything. They'll, they'll have the Garmin watches. They'll have all the technology. They'll have everything to monitor how they're going and, and what they're doing. Um, they love stats. They love data. They love the mission. 
if you are a crusader, if I, um, I had a friend of mine who I did up his profile and it turned out that he was a crusader and at the time he was suffering from a fair bit of anxiety and depression and he couldn't figure out what it was and why he was feeling that way because he was normally quite motivated. Um, and what I was able to help him to understand was that he didn't have a mission for himself. He was just coasting around in life and sloughing around and hadn't created something for himself. So it was very, very important once we found out he was a crusader, I was able to sit there with him and go, right, dude, we need to find you a mission. We need to find you something to wake up for. We need to find you something to do. We need to find you a cause, something to create. They are very logical. Um, and these guys can and will be pioneers. These guys are um, prime ministers. These guys are principals. These guys are um, leaders in many, many attributes. Um, they love to be leaders. They love to be known to be the the one who knows the information. They like to be the one that people turn to. Um, they like to be at the front of everything. No, uh, mm, they like to be at the front of everything or they like to be the brains of everything. But these guys, do not they're not innovative. In, innova yeah, innovative. They're not innovative. Once they have all of the facts and all of the logic, they will then move forward and create. Uh, once they know that they know everything, then they will step forward and they will present right? But they won't necessarily, um, what's a good analogy? Um, okay, here, great, great. Okay, so a lighter is used and they would learn that you need to do this, do this, and it turns on. They wouldn't learn to, they wouldn't, they wouldn't ever think of using it to squash something or they wouldn't ever think of using this to, it's <laughs> a bad analogy, they wouldn't use it for anything else other than what it's meant to do because it makes logical sense to use it exactly as it's used. They wouldn't be innovative enough to use it for something else. Everyone's like, why do you have a lighter? I have a lighter because I burn incense and I have a woo-woo side. It's the only reason why I have a lighter. Um, so yeah, does that make sense, guys? So the Crusaders are very smart. They want to know all the facts. And once they know all the facts, they will then present and be... Once they know that they are... Um, they are the most knowledgeable in that thing. They will then present that thing and then they will, um, then they will be the leader. Um, they are very skeptical though. Very, very skeptical. If they don't have all the facts, if they don't think the facts make enough sense, they will not trust you. They will not believe you and they will not understand the situation. Um, hence why I know my housemates are, are um, crusaders because of the way that the current situation is in the world. Definitely. Just, it just brings to light for me knowing what people are. Um, it's, it's an amazing conversation to have. So being logical, they are very lean. They're very um, impersonal. These guys, they're not emotional beings. You may have someone in your life. Um, a lot of our guardians partner with crusaders because they love their drive and they're motivated and they're logical. But later on in relationships, it can actually become a bit of a problem because the, the, the crusader, it doesn't make sense to be all emotional because it's a use of energy that just uh, doesn't make sense. So they're always on a mission. They're always focused. So a crusader... Um, often will forget to eat because they're on a mission. These guys will often not move, not eat, potentially not go to the toilet if they're, if they're on a mission. These guys will wake up in the morning. The first thing they want to do is get to work. Their idea of a great social gathering would be getting together with their other brainiac friends and sitting there with their computers and, and working away on a big mission together with all their laptops out and someone cooking for them, and someone cleaning the house for them. That is bloody awesome to these guys. They think that's the best thing in the world. Um, these guys are definitely the ones that I always recommend to get a cleaner and a chef because um, then they can be more productive, right? Everything's about being productive for these guys. If it doesn't make sense and it's not productive, I don't want to do it um, because that's where their, their energy is. They're very lean people, um, so they will... Um, they're very lean so they don't have much in reserve. So again, they will be much like the sensor, very logical and very measured with their energy. But because they get so focused like the racehorse, right? Because the racehorse has got blinkers on. Because they get so focused, they may forget to eat. And they forget that it actually makes logical sense to eat, to have the energy, to have the brain power to keep going on their mission. So it's a bit of an argument we have with crusaders about being productive um, and using the right um, aspects around them to, ke to keep them more productive. Um, so if you are a crusader and you are super busy, um, I would recommend getting yourself a chef or um, getting yourself a guardian as a partner, which we'll go into shortly a little bit more. Um, so again, these guys, like I said, you'll find these guys in Lycra on the weekends. Um, they're, the, they're, they're good triathletes. They're good. These guys, um, their energy burns long. So these guys will do the triathlon. They will do the long, steady state stuff. These guys will be out riding their bikes on the weekend for hundreds of kilometers. These guys will be out running 
for, for ages and they'll be, they'll, be, they'll be scanning themselves. They'll have their Garmin watches. They'll be wanting to beat their own times. They are very competitive um, and generally with themselves, but they can actually also, the downfall here can be that they are very um, judgmental on themselves. Um, they're very critical of themselves, very critical of themselves actually, but it will be less of an emotional standpoint. It'll be more of a logic I must be the best. I must have all the data. I must be the smartest and I must be recognized for that. Very much their kind of thing. Um, and again, though, these guys with their food, it must be well cooked. If they're, if they're, they're slowing their body down with salads and, and, um, and lightly cooked foods, it's going to really slow their body down and, um, and, and make them lethargic and it'll cause brain fog and bloating and distension and, um, and stomach problems. So these guys well-cooked foods and again like the sensor these guys are eating five meals a day um but but consistent so um i didn't actually cut, touch on that with the other one so a connector can have three to five meals a day but their main meal will want to be around lunchish um or breakfast but it needs to be quite even they don't want to go without food for too long the connectors and the activators i'll give you guys a perspective again so these guys oh look up my nose okay these guys are very reactive and playful. They need constant fueling with their food, but in small, tiny portions. They're just little small meals, bigger lunch, uh, the activators. Their biggest meal is actually at dinner time. This is when these guys, so what happens is they're, 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 they're driven by adrenaline and whatnot, but um, they are go, go, go all day. But at nighttime, what we want to do is we want to shut their system down. So these guys actually want to have their bigger meal at nighttime with carbohydrates because carbohydrates create sedation. Have you guys ever had like a massive bowl of pasta at lunch or something like that and just wanted to go to sleep for the rest of the day? Yeah, that's what happens to these guys. They need to eat a very small breakfast. Their, their food kind of goes this way at nighttime. Connectors need to keep it relatively even but bigger, biggerish um, at lunch, but no, no big meals because it makes them, them sedated and, and tired. Um, sensors is like a bird. They just eat constantly graze which is fine. Crusaders can be much the same if, they don't, if they're not forgetting to eat. But these guys need to have everything really well cooked, consistent foods. Um, diplomats and guardians are the ones that actually should only be having no more than three meals a day. Yes, you heard me. No more than three meals a day. And their biggest meal should be at lunch. Biggest at lunch. Um, it's very, very important. If you have a big late lunch, these guys are late eaters as well because we sleep in, right? Right. We're sleeping in, we're having a late breakfast, a late lunch and dinner should be the lightest. <clears throat> that should be, um, for a diplomat, dinner should be the lightest, uh, for a guardian, dinner should be the lightest and or vegetarian, vegan. I generally know that I do best eating vegetarian, ve vegan at nighttime. Um, as a diplomat, and that's something really important to consider because these guys are insulin sensitive. So we actually put on weight very, very easy, and our insulin is spiked very, very easily. So the biggest risk of diabetes is over this side of the wheel, right? So um, understanding that uh, small dinners is crucial, lighter digestion and whatnot. The only time you'll see these guys eating really big dinners is um, because they're with family, because it feels good and heavy. Uh, heavy feels safe for these guys. And so it's an emotional thing for these guys to eat. These guys eat for sensualness and emotion. So the other thing I didn't say about diplomats, guys, is diplomats are the most sensual beings. We are very sensual. Food has to feel good. Um, movement has to feel good. Everything has to feel good for a diplomat. Whereas crusaders are like, eh, is it logical to do that thing? Is it logical to have that thing? Right, I'll do that thing. But they are also, they love to be the best in everything. So these guys will often do all the fads. The crusaders... Crusaders will do all the fads. Connectors will do all the fads. The connectors want the new fun, shiny thing. Crusaders just want to be the pioneer. They want to be the first to have everything. They want to be the best at everything. So if the food or the thing is the best thing, then they want it, right? How many of you know people like that? Connectors, it's just fun, something random, something different. Crusaders, it's um, I want to be the first and be the best at it. What else? What else? What else? Um, like I said, Crusaders won't generally be too... Um, uh, creative necessarily they will take something they will take the facts they will organize it find ways of being the best at it and making it better and that's how they become progressive um, whereas they won't necessarily get the two things and create something from that uh, they won't they won't have the initiative to go oh this one and this one together make this color that's a new color yay they would just go no that's the green pen and that's the blue pen and I just use a green pen and I just use a blue pen for what I need. Like 
doesn't make sense to mix them. Why would you mix them? That's very bizarre. Um, so I hope, hope that helps make some sense about your partners or your friends or yourselves. Um, what else? What else? Uh, so how they behave, they are very, um, they behave quite logical, quite like professional, but a lot of them do have a really quirky, fun, playful side to them. Definitely. That's still there. Even though they're very logical, they do still have a very quirky, playful time, but it will make sense to them. So for those who have partners that maybe you think might be a crusader, they're probably always working, always on the mission, and they're always working to provide, right? So then they're not necessarily selfish. It will be for a reason. They'll be they'll be they'll be in the work zone. They'll come home from work and do more work, right? Whereas a guardian might want them to come home and connect with them and cuddle and be on the couch and, and be with the kids and be with the family. Whereas a crusader might be like, actually that doesn't make sense to me. So um, or you haven't factored that in, or I have work to do, I have stuff for the mission so I can provide. So with a crusader it's actually really important if you're any other health type with a crusader is understanding that you actually just need to give them a plan so you need to go hey i need some time with you can you help with can we do can you find time for and get let them go into their plan into their schedule and they will then find the time for you for that uh does that make sense and then making sure that you allow them time to schedule you in you are important to them um, it just needs to be a logical time for them to give you that energy. And they will quite often, when when they're on mission, when they're eating the right food, when they're planned, when they're structured, um, they will um, quite often have a playful side to them. But, but that needs to make, it needs to be, um, the time needs to be created for them to express that part of themselves. Right? So um, they are very rigid. Um, physically and emotionally. So these guys, uh, it's super important to do yoga and anything rotational with the spine is super important for these guys is getting them doing rota rotational work because their spine will actually um, seize up, becomes very rigid. Um, these guys do have uh, big calcification problems naturally. It's actually just a predisposition for them. We talked about the endomorphs having um, pre uh, diabetes as a, as a thing. These guys is rigidity and calcification. So um, Crusaders making sure that you are doing a lot of um, core work, a lot of movement and flow. It's also super important as much as these guys will be up early in the morning, the evening time is actually absolutely fundamental for these guys to switch off and relax their mind. There's an hour there specific to each individual human that actually is, um, for the Crusaders, is actually a shut off time. It's like a really good time to do some meditation whilst doing yoga. That sort of a thing. Like it's it's that 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 one thing I say to Crusaders: cook all your food, um, make sure you're eating, but then move your spine and shut off at night time. They have to to be more productive and better at what they're doing. They have to reboot themselves in that one hour space specific to them. Um, they play. We've spoken about. They react. Okay, their reactions generally they're very analytical. Um, so these guys, mm, Dr. Cam always gave the best analogy for this so I'm going to use it, um, is these guys, so perfect um, guardian wife, husband crusader. So the guardian wife might go, hey, honey, we haven't been to the beach for ages. Um, do you, can we go to the beach this morning? I'd love to go to the beach this morning. And in just a few split seconds, that crusader has already sat there and gone, right, so it's going to take 20 minutes to get everything ready, 20 minutes to get everyone in the car. Oh, it's 20 minutes for me to finish what I'm doing, 20 minutes to get in the car, 40 minutes to drive there. Um, get out of the car, get onto the beach. That's another 20 minutes. We're probably gonna, we've got dinner at, I've got lunch with someone at at 1.30. So it's nine o'clock now. So uh, going through all of this, then we're only going to get about 40 minutes on the beach if we're lucky at that. Um, maybe even just 20. Oh, actually, yeah, because then we've got to do this. Okay. And then we've got to get back home again, get ready. Then we're going to end up late for that lunch. And then he'll just go, no, nah, I don't want to go to the beach immediately so the guardian's like i want to spend time and do something lovely outdoors and the crusader's just gone logic 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 no nah, i don't want to do it and they're not the greatest at communicating that so they will say no and then the guardian will be like oh but you never spend time with me and it doesn't make sense and i just want to go and why won't you do this with me right have any of you had situations that are similar to that maybe like in relationships um it's very common so actually, I say that an analogy because it's actually very common for guardians and, and crusaders to get together. Um, <clears throat> what else? What else? What else? What else? Suppressed and stressed is just someone putting too much on the crusader um, and not giving them clarity. So they don't like um, they don't like 
Diplomats and Guardians can be very emotional and um, long-winded, if you haven't noticed. And so Crusaders get the shits with that big time. They're like, just give me the dot points. Just give me everything in facts and dot points and, like, let that be it. So the Crusader types is just logic, facts, less emotion. Um, so if you are wanting to keep your Crusader partner happy, give them logic and facts. Ask them to... to, to, to um, Ask them to schedule you, you in for some, some special time, right? That's the best thing to do with a crusader. Uh, the other one is then we're going to move across to the last health type. Hit me up with any questions you might have, guys, too. So we started with connector. If you're just tuning in now, we started with connector. We went to sensor, activator, diplomat, crusader. We're now going to do guardian. So guardians are the bear. What do bears do? They love to hibernate. Bears have their cubs and their family. They are very protective and hostile. Bears don't like to be hostile, but they will be hostile when they are um, provoked, right? So these people, they enjoy people. They conserve energy very well. They are social. They love to host dinners. They are natural lovers, and they also have a very high body mass. So these are the ones that, um, you know, the memes of like, I walk past the bakery and put on four kilos. These are the guardians. These guardians will also put on weight. They reserve for the people. They are constantly caring and wanting to nurture other people. Yes, a bear. So the bears are the ones at the moment that are potentially out there hoarding a lot. Like at the moment with the current climate, the ones that you see with the shopping trolleys full is actually, if you have a look, you will see they are the bear people. They are big, beautiful bears. And they are conserving. They are hoarding and collecting just in case. It's just a natural predisposition for them. And this is why I started the conversation with connectors. Guys, if you're just tuning in now, you're going to want to go back and have a look at the connector one because um, these are the people that need us the most right now for emotional support in this time. Um, uh, sorry, I just read Talia's message saying that Izzy's going to be a diplomat. <laughs> yes, quite possibly. Um, so these are the ones, the, the guardians are the ones that are out there hoarding and connect, collecting. And these are the ones that are most likely to... Um, these are the ones that are most likely to go and cook someone on the street dinner and take it to them. If someone's in isolation, the bears are the most likely ones that are going to do something to provide for other people. Um, so like I said, they're naturally, they're conserver. They will conserve energy just in case they will, um, they, they like to collect. If they are stressed, they, they, they will get stressed if their cupboards are bare. Um, so these guys need financial security. They need, um, to have they need to have, then do. D Diplomats and guardians both need to have, and then they will go do. Um, so the bears need to make sure their cupboards are full. If their cupboards and their fridge is empty, that will stress them out. Because what am I going to do? Like, what if something happens? I need to have in case something happens. Does that make sense? Um, who do you know that is like this? I know a, a lot of us are probably now recognizing those people in our lives that are like that. We all have this tendency. Nobody wants bare cupboards, but it's the perfect analogy for you to understand and, um, and see what I'm talking about. Um, these guys are also going to hold weight. These guys are seriously going to conserve and hold weight when they feel like their people or their tribe is under threat. Hence why at the moment we are going to have a lot more people having um, diabetes issues because um, at the moment everyone's going into have uh, mode so that uh, just wanting uh, for the just in case kind of phase so the guardians are the ones that really are um, currently going to put on a lot of weight because they know that everyone needs it their, their people their tribe their community um, may need them to help them get through like a bird a sensor um, the fine people uh, yeah thank you oh cat love to you so much love you are such a beautiful human um the guardians need to understand right now they're holding and conserving because the tribe the people the community is under threat and it's just a natural response for them to put weight on so for guardians it's about giving and nurturing so right now i would say to my guardians who can you nurture at the moment who can you help who can you gift who can you be there for um who can you communicate with and connect with uh, it's very important um you guys need to be giving and loving and nurturing other people it's a natural tendency for you and at the moment with the climate that might not be possible in the same format you were before so it's time to get really creative what can you do for the community and tribe so that you are can that you are contributing um it will make you feel better you will naturally make you feel better if you are giving um oh i feel so emotional about guardians um and so guardians are the ones that um like i said conserve um they're very territorial and protective of their family so there'll be an element um these guys don't like people necessarily dropping in on them because then that's dropping in on their family and their people um they a great analogy came up the other day 
bears don't like to be grumpy and angry, but if they have to be, they will be. If they have to do something to protect their tribe, their people, their beliefs, they will fire up and they will become dangerously aggressive. Um, as you would all know, you probably have a guardian who it takes a lot to get them upset, but once they're upset, whoo, run. Um, the, uh, there's a joke that we actually also say, I'll, I'll give you guys a reflection point so you guys can see it on here. These guys were giving testosterone and aggression. That's their natural hormones, their natural reactivity. These guys were not. These are the bigger bodies. These are the ones that are the tall, heavier, broad, hold weight. The creators of whatever you want to, whatever you want to recognize with, the creators gave these guys more reactivity and testosterone and fieriness and aggressiveness than these guys. Because if these guys were given it, they'd be deadly, right? So these guys got the fiery, aggressive, I call it the chihuahua mentality. And then these guys got the loving, the nurturing, the big friendly giant kind of vibe going on. Does that make sense with all your people and all your friends? BFGs? Chihuahuas. Aggressive. <laughs> Chihuahua. I'm not trying to insult anyone there. I'm just giving you guys a great perspective. <laughs> it always made me laugh anyway. It was a great analogy on, on how to accept and love those people around us, right? You know, you get an activator or a connector who's just being fiery and aggressive. You just got to go, oh, that's great. Like, look at you being fiery and aggressive. You're just expressing yourself. That's fine. I'm just going to hold the bucket, let you be fiery and aggressive because I'm a diplomat and I can just sit here and take it and hold it and sit there and take it and hold it and take it and hold it and take it and hold it. And then later, I'll get to a point where I'll just need to vent or I'll just need to, and quite often um, guardians and diplomats will get to a point where they're just, um, they need to emotionally offload, right? So they need a safe space, a safe person, a safe environment to offload and it's really essential or else they will hold it and again they will hold weight they will hold inflammation they will hold um, indigestion because they're not emotionally feeling safe to release so it's very much about feeling and safety and connection with these guys um, in the current climate if you're a guardian who is in isolation I highly highly recommend that you ensure that when you are going to eat um, make food and, and eat food that you are videoing or talking on the phone to people. It's really important that you guys have a lot of touch points at the moment. So if you can't physically get that um, within your household, make sure you're not eating alone. It's very, very important. It actually really will help you to eat better, make better food choices, chew your food more, um, and it, your digestion will be much more ready if you are communicating with people. I know it seems really bizarre, but it's actually the it's just, this is the way these guys are created. So please, if you're a guardian, make sure that you are connecting and nurturing other people. Um, and guys, if, if any of this is resonating with you, if you think this is really cool and interesting, share it. Share it. There's a lot of people out there that need to hear this. There's a lot of people that need to hear this. Um, then what else do we have here? These guys love doing dinners. So at the moment, obviously we can't do that, but maybe you guys could get your family together on Zoom or Skype and, and have dinner parties online. You know, maybe you guys, these guys are great at creating communities. They're great at creating um, ha, uh, nurturing environments. I know right now all the endomorphs, are, the diplomats and the guardians are feeling it because we can't hug anybody. I'm feeling it. There's this meme going around with um, Kermit the Frog all, all hugged up because he's like a hugger and he can't hug anybody and I was like that's me I'm feeling it very much feeling it can't hug anybody and it's driving me crazy um so the guardians will naturally conserve they're naturally um uh they're naturally the carers their social aspect is their most Im important aspect for their health right food is actually second important for them so what they're eating is less important than their their people if their social environment is balanced and good, then their food will become a better choice and they are more likely to choose better foods and eat better foods and eat more um, accommodating for their health. These guys are the ones that can also go with eating just one meal a day. These guys do really good with fasting. Diplomats and guardians are really good at fasting. It's actually very, very beneficial for them to eat later um, in the morning um, and less at night. So if guardians just wanted to eat one meal a day, they actually could very easily suffice it. And in fact, a detox for a guardian, a very safe, natural detox for a guardian is to make vegetable broth. And that vegetable broth would actually sustain them for um, 10 days, 10 to 12 days. These guys can naturally, they have enough energy in, in reserve, their body functions perfectly fine and safely on just having vegetable broth with no meat, no protein, no veg, no, no solids for 10 to 12 days. That's how conserving this body is. Does that make sense? Um, 
all the activators and connectors are like, that's ridiculous. But th that's naturally what these guys can do. They can naturally have a lot less food and survive because their body is incredible extrapolating nutrients from food. So guardians and diplomats actually have the longest digestive tract out of everybody. Everybody. So their body extracts more nutrients than anybody else. So we actually can do with having far less food than anybody actually realizes. The only reason why we eat so much food is because we are emotional beings. These are, we are the ones that are most likely to emotionally eat. Um, crusaders and activators, eating is just a thing that they know they have to do to be the best, to be logical, to be more playful, to have more energy, right? Um, Senses are more likely to eat because they know they need it. They need that energy. Uh, it's logic. Remember, senses don't do anything unless it's logic. Um, and they don't overdo things because it's not logic to overgive. So they will conserve and conserve their energy and conserve their outputs. Connectors, just fun, love, happy, play, whatever. Food comes last for them because um, their bodies are very resilient. Their bodies are very playful. Their energy is very playful. So as long as they're out having fun, Connectors, just have more fun. Just have more fun. Don't worry about food. Don't worry about anything else. Just go have more fun and you will be happy and you'll be healthy. Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, now we'll get into relationship sides of things. Who's happy to hear about relationship sorts of things? So I've already discussed a few bits with um, the Guardians and the Crusaders. Um, so Guardians and Crusaders are a great match, male to female. So a female Guardian with a male crusader is very, very, very common. The male crusader loves the nurturing side of the guardian. He loves that because she's, she looks after him. She loves his strength and his structure and his, his, um, oh, my hand's not in the right spot. She loves his, his strength and structure and the way he's so like driven and passionate. Um, senses will often date senses <laughs> or diplomats. Very, very common for these three here to partner up. Um, especially, uh, although sensor males, male sensors will often go over here as well to the guardians because these guys nurture and love. Very, very common. Uh, connectors, they'll, they, you generally see a lot of male diplomats with female connectors because the male diplomat is sturdy and strong and, and even paced where the, the connector is like playful and fun. So he loves that she's playful and fun. She loves that he's um, structured and strong and, and, and will look after her and protect her. Activators. Um, a fiery and aggressive and playful. These guys love each other a lot <laughs> because they are, they're an even match very much. Actually, all the way around here, the, the, the crusaders, the activators and connectors are all going to be great in relationships because they are very, very similar. But as a, a, an opposite, as an opposing, they will also really like aspects of this. But as you can tell, you probably wouldn't get a male activator with a female diplomat because the size Size is the thing, the main thing here. Um, you can get short guardians, but they are they are the more heavy set, beautiful bodies. So um, you often won't see too much of a male, um, yeah, of a male with this. But these guys, uh, the female activator, um, think of like your Sicilians, like your gorgeous little um, Span uh, Spanish girls, like they're just gorgeous skin, gorgeous. Like these ugh. over here, these guys love their behaviour. Especially the men, the diplomat and guardian men love these guys. The crusader men love the females of these two because they are just such a great combination um, initially. This can wear out over time and, and all of these things, we can what we love about someone can quite often become something that we actually resent later on, which is something to be aware of. Um, and this is where great conversations come in with relationships and understanding the dynamics that you actually hold and why you fall in love with someone in the first place. Diplomats, as you would understand, these guys are even paced. So diplomats very often will date their own. Just for the size, the compatibility, these two will generally often match together. Um, and they're long-term maters. Like these guys are the ones that mate for life. They, they are calm, they're balanced, they're, they're nurturing, um, they have deep and meaningful conversations. Like these guys are just sensual beings. So these guys will partner for a long time generally. Um, but unfortunately, they do hold a lot of emotional baggage. A lot. Because obviously these guys are the ruminators. These guys are the long-term thinkers, long-term planners, everything. Senses and crusaders get together very frequently um, because they are logical and it makes sense and they are ordered and they are, um, you know, it's the way it happens. These, it just makes sense to be together. Connectors and act, like I said, connectors and activators go well together. Um, but these guys are probably the ones that <laughs> have the most uh, open opportunity to match with the other ones because 
because they are just so fun and playful and attractive that everybody loves these guys. Um, everyone's attractive though. Um, please understand, everyone's attractive. But what I'm saying is just a natural tendency in this side to have those those um those outputs. Guardians, everyone loves a guardian because they are such beautiful nurturers and they are just so reliable, dependable, caring, um, loving. So they, they will always match up very easily with all the health types as well. Um, diplomats, diplomats are pretty good. I find as a female diplomat, it's very hard um, because once you get to understand, once you get your profile done, you get to understand your mind. And I'll use me as a great reference point. I'm a very large diplomat. I'm very strong, very motivated, very driven. For me, I really need to find either a very motivated diplomat because these guys can be very calm and even paced. So for me, where I sit on the wheel, I actually find my own kind to be very annoying. <laughs> Does that make sense? Because we are, my hand's shaking, we are, um, I am very motivated and driven for a diplomat. I'm, I have major tendencies, I have huge tendencies of these two in my spectrum, but I work like this one and I'm driven and motivated like this one. Does that make sense? So these guys are motivated and driven and focused and 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 um and um, on a mission. I'm very much like that as a diplomat. So I find it very hard to date my own kind, and I actually prefer these guys a lot more. But they need to be the tall version of this kind. These guys can be very short and very tall. Um, and I find guardians often to be too um sedated. So I find these guys just don't have enough oomph in them. Does that make sense? Is that kind of cool? So um. Uh, what else am I saying here? So, yeah, dip <laughs> diplomats can be very calm and methodical, which is very attractive to these guys in some ways, but also activators. I know I have an activated girlfriend. She and I were talking about this, and she's like, I actually find she hates diplomats. She hates them because they're not motivated enough. She hates guardians. Well, not hates them, but as a partner spec um, conversation, she doesn't find these guys um, attractive in the way that they're motivated or their lack of motivation, right? So she likes to date crusaders because they're motivated and driven they're passionate they're driven oh not, not they're passionate they're driven they're they're on a mission they're like go 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 and, and these guys all date each other because they're the same but they sometimes depending on where they are in life will find a great attraction over here because this is the long-term planning this is the the steady reliable come home to a home-cooked meal come home to my my beautiful loving caring partner who will always look after me right um senses they generally just have um they're like birds in every aspect they they will have their partner it will generally be a long-term partner it's a logical relationship it's one that's um generally not too chaotic young when they're younger they might might date someone more chaotic but um it won't generally be a long-term thing for sure um and connectors you guys just go be with everyone just go have fun with everyone try everything be with everything play with everything have everything <laughs> these guys are um yeah, like I said, these guys have trouble being monogamous. They, not that they, not fully, like, there's no judgment there. Um, but they can tend, they do, they do well having their energy in many places because they can be too much for one person, right? So I hope that's given you guys lots of beautiful thoughts and conversations. And I hope you can understand now why I'm so passionate about, about all of this. Because once you have this understanding and this knowledge, um, and you have this, this lens on people, on life, it, it becomes a really cool way of just appreciating everyone and everything and understanding people for their complexity. My mission with all of this is to empower people with the knowledge and the appreciation of each other and why we are all amazing and why our contribution can be grand and why um, our flaws are even more beautiful because then you see what you need from other people. Then you see how you can co-create with other people and, and why certain relationships did or did not work right? Um, and why certain conversations are better for you or not better for you. Um, that being said, I do still have my 10 day immune booster group open. If you haven't done your 10 day immune booster and you want to let me know and I can give you the link. You can get your, your, you guys are getting an opportunity to get it for free for 10, for you get 30 days access into all of this, um, for free. And you also get a 10 day immune booster, which is really important for us right now with the current climate is making sure that we are healthy. So if you haven't done that yet, um, I'll pop the link into the, um, I'll pop the link into the conversation here. Um, so everyone can get onto it, um, and share with your friends and family and then maybe watch this or maybe I've made it a very long one. So maybe jump through it, jump through it and share bits of this. Um, yeah enjoy guys thanks for, thanks for sticking around guys thanks for sticking it in uh sticking it in Ooh, 
thanks for sticking with me the whole conversation for those that did um and thank you for watching the replay feel free to share this with people feel free to um invite others to watch this i'll drop the link find out what your loved ones are find out who your family are for sure you've got you've got a free window to do it so why wouldn't you I'm going to pop the link in below. I love you all. I'm going to go into my private 10-day group because everyone who's doing the 10 days um, and getting the free profile, let me know if you've done it and you've not told me yet because I'll add you to my free group. Over in the free group, I'm going to go over and do some cooking today. So I'm going to do some cool um, breakfast muffins. I'm going to do some cool little cookies and biscuits, um, some healthy ones. So you might want to make sure you're in the group. Um, and I'll also do a workout today when I feel a bit better. Yay, because I went and got weights. So today the weight, the training will actually be with weights. So if you've got some weights at home, um, make sure you've got them ready for this training session. Um, and all get creative, like get cans of food or bottles of water or um, pot plants and things like that. Get creative with how we're going to use, um, add some weights into a resistance training. And it's going to be very much diplomat style training. The other trainings I've done have been a lot more high energy activator style. Now you're understanding it. Now I can start having these conversations with you guys and go, right. So hit training is activators and connectors, right? So like go, 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 go. Diplomats and guardians have a different style of training, which is more methodical and, um, uh, we are good at lifting. So today's training session will be very much about lifting. Um, so enjoy. I'll see you guys over there. If you're not in the group, let me know. I'll add it. I'll add you to the group. Um, and go get your ten day. Pro, uh, go get your month long profile for free. Give it to your loved ones. See you guys.